Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Ask the Experts for December 7. My name is Carl Capolingua. I'm the market analyst over here at Think Markets, and it is a pleasure to be with you as we very simply throw the conversation over to you and answer all the questions about your portfolio. It could be technical, could be fundamental, could be stocks, could be crypto, anything you like. Okay, pretty simple stuff today. Over to you. We've got a few questions coming in straight away. John has got Prometicus. Let's have a look at PME is the ticker code on that one. While I'm doing the technicals, let's head over here to our Thomson Reuters Refinitiv Icon stock valuation tool. Now, this data that you're about to see loaded up here for PME comes from Thomson Reuters is the company, Refinitiv Icon is the product, and they survey a number of brokers of the major brokers. And not, of course, not all brokers cover all stocks, but the ones that do cover particular stocks, they get their consensus estimates for a number of financial metrics, for example, revenue, gross income, EBITDA, EBIT, uh, NPAT, EPS, and so on and so forth. And this spreadsheet is very clever. It uh, collates all of those things together and then does through some fancy stuff behind the scenes, it comes up to an idea of valuation for the company. That stuff highlighted is my stuff. The rest of it belongs to Thomson Reuters, so don't blame me for any inaccuracies. But what we can see here for Prometica straight away in terms of what the big brokers think, zero strong buys, one buy, four holds, and one sell. So pretty mixed there, and the consensus is there for a hold. In terms of their price targets. We have a 57.55 price target, six estimates in total. Uh, the high estimate there is 62, low estimate is 53, and the standard deviation in those estimates is $3.80. So it gives you an idea of, uh, I guess, what uh, what the value is that the brokers can see in the shares. This, of course, is just a summary table here. So it does tell you that their target is 57.55 with 2.5% upside. And then I can manipulate certain uh, items and I'm looking at the current FY which is uh, to the end of June 2022. You can see that the uh, P ratio, forecast P ratio is 133.6. The one that's in the bag is this one here for FY21 which is 190.37. So it's a high PE, uh, high growth stock. How do you know it's high growth? Well, we can look over this side and we can see EPS over here. Um, and you can see that it has grown its uh, earnings per share quite significantly, 21%, 33%, 42%, 34%, 17%, 44% forecast out to FY25. Of the uh, future estimates, um, the average is 32% growth per annum, which is actually very, very good. So we might uh, we might say that, well, 133 times uh, current year's earnings seems substantial, but when you're growing your earnings at 32% per annum, that PE is going to come down very quickly. Now, there is some execution risk associated with the fact that that is expected to happen in the future and anything can happen uh, to cause that not to occur. So you do have a look at your risk levels as well, and, and, and that will generally come from what you know about the business. I do know a fair bit about Promenicus, and that's a, a very, very solid business, very strong business, and you can see that exhibited in, in a number of these metrics. I'm happy to go with a low risk level, but if we do change this, for example, to moderate risk, you'll see some of the valuations change. So we, we can only accommodate uh, less upside at moderate risk if we go to high risk. Uh, you can see the fair value coming down now to just 15% upside. So you do need to know or have an opinion about the company to select a risk level, and that just changes the discount rate. So obviously we've got future cash flows. Uh, what analysts do is we discount those cash flows back at a particular interest rate, which we think represents the risk inherent in that company. Obviously the higher risk, the larger the discount rate, therefore the larger the negative impact on your valuation. I can change things in here, for example, um, instead of using the broker's forecast growth of, th growth of 32%, I can put in my own growth estimate if I have an opinion on that. Uh, external consensus, you don't need to worry about that one. In terms of the comparison PE, so what, what are we going to compare this PE to in the market? Um, I typically have a default set to a dynamic future, so we're looking at taking a median of the broker's uh, future estimates there and using that as a, as a fair sort of value peg to compare the current PE to the future PE and then um, looking at the growth to see uh, what the valuation is. Now, if you then this would indicate that if you're comfortable in paying 92 times earnings, uh, then there is still some upside in the price for Prometicus here. It's substantial. I mean, look, uh, you know, that would suggest 77.93 at a, at a low risk rating. But again, you have to have an opinion on that risk. You might say, look, I, I'm not prepared to pay uh, 92 times. I'm only prepared to say for, uh, pay for a growth company with earnings um, 
per share growth of about 32%, which is, it's fantastic, but it's not necessarily shooting the lights out, you know, uh, 50 to 100%. Uh, you might say, well, 80, 80 is probably a more reasonable uh, PE for me. And then you can see that the upside comes down to about 20%. What do I feel is appropriate based upon my experience? And, and this one's a little bit tricky because you can't use historical and you can't use um, you know, sort of long-term averages because uh, the market has been prepared to pay three, four, 600 times um, earnings in the past because of the growth that's in the business. Look, I, I think somewhere between uh, some, I think 80 is probably fair for a, for a company of this calibre uh, and therefore I do think there's some upside in it. So whether it's 20% or 18% or 17%, that's not what this is about. It's about saying, you know, is there enough in it um, for me to want to hang on to it? And I think there is based upon that. And I'll just give you, for your reference, I mean, I can play with this all day. Um, you don't have the ability to type in the numbers and you're probably shouting at your screen, hey, Carl, why don't you try, why don't you try this number for me? So I can get an idea. 75, um, it comes down to 12%. Uh, 70 comes down to probably 5%. Um, and you could go, um, anywhere you know if you if, if 50 was your limit for example now it becomes overvalued and this um, is the beauty and sometimes the problem with fundamental analysis because uh, you know beauty is in the eye of the beholder and we have to make discretionary choices about what fair value is I think uh, we're pretty good on PME in terms of valuation because of the growth in the business now if uh, my hunch is correct and there is uh, some 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 good upside in the business then the chart should reflect that and i think it is i mean we've got this bottom left top right obviously it's done very very well the long-term trend is the dark green zone uh, my long-term moving averages which i use the 144 and 233 and the short-term trends here is the 2134 exponential moving averages so we can see uh, this wonderful long-term uptrends uh, we, we we get some idea of whether it's uh, it's kind of respecting the trend and it is and you can see a couple of times there it's you know it's bounced off it and, and well supported to be fair through last year and uh, really since the start of this trend so that that trend zone is, is quite reliable i think and of course we are uh, interacting with it now uh, i think we're looking pretty good until omicron popped up and uh, put a bit of a hole in the broader market so this decline is is not at odds with the broader market it's not like ProMedicus has been the worst stock on the market it's, it's certainly not the case so it was looking good going into this little wobble that we've had and uh, therefore uh, i'm happy to give it a little bit of leeway on the short-term trend and trust the long-term trend i I think the candles are pretty constructive, not amazing, but pretty constructive since the low. Today's uh, decline, uh, which we'll get an update uh, because that last candle is an intraday candle. We'll get an update in about 11 minutes from a data prov provider. It'll be interesting to see how that turns out. Not a great candle today. I'd like to see it close near the highs with a white candle or uh, a long lower shadow. Uh, I think today is going to be pretty important in terms of the technicals. I mean, ideally, uh, we do close near those highs and we get back above. And I'll give you a number here uh, to give me more confidence in this one. That high there, 58.11. So you can see that upper shadow uh, and the upper shadow I'm talking about is this one here. Okay, watch that one there. So that uh, indicates um, you know supply coming into the market around that short-term trend zone, which is now starting to act as resistance. So for whatever reason, you know, investors are a little bit nervous, a little bit cranky with this one. And that's where the supply started. If we can close above that level, then for me, it tells me that that we've we've got rid of those that those individuals that 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 didn't believe in it, uh, and it, with them out of the market in, in cash. Um, then that I think facilitates a move higher. So look, buy, hold, sell. It's an absolute hold for me on the basis that I do think there's some upside in the valuation. This wonderful long-term trend, some encouraging candles in the short term, but a little bit of caution in terms of what's going to happen there at that 58.11 mark. So definitely a strong hold. Is it a buy? Let's see how it goes. Close by 58.11, and then I think it would be uh, yeah, it definitely an add or an accumulate uh, in a longer, longer term portfolio. So that is PME for John. John's also chipped in with BKL. So maybe let's head back here to the fundamentals. We can move through these much faster now because I've, I've, I've done all the, um, all the orientation uh, for the new people who have joined us today. And there's always new people in these sessions. So that gives them an idea of uh, what we're talking about. So let's let that load up. Let's head over to the chart and have a look at Blackmore's not completely different from Prometicus in that we are slipping a short-term trend and holding a long-term trend. This, I'll be honest with you, this concerns me. It was, to be honest, it was one of the nicest trends out there and looking very, very good into this point here. Again, 
it's not like there weren't reasons for the for the broader market decline to cause this pullback but i would have thought that we would have seen far more support for black balls than we have i would suggest that the strength of this short-term downtrend exhibits that the initial thesis is incorrect and there is far more supply in there than initially thought and therefore we need to be on alert and we need to sort of be switching to well is there uh, maybe a potential bounce to exit or lighten the load as, as a cautionary measure if you're really nervous about it then you'd be getting out let me just get rid of these for a second and we can discuss some of those uh, those themes so if we saw say a move back into here which is that short-term trend zone should act as resistance now and we saw some pretty bearish candles i think that would be a, a good reason to to at least lighten the load on the position and then your final exit would be somewhere um, on a break through that long-term trend zone and i don't think you want to hang in down there so that's the worst case scenario what would be the signal to hang on there and, and persist with this one uh, well clearly we need to see some white candles come in we need to see this long-term um, support zone act as actual support that's what we want to see so by painting a picture here it looks it, you know i'm looking at that now and i go wow that's fantastic that's something i definitely want to hold that's the kind of candle we need to see over the next few days john otherwise i'm, I'm starting to get a little bit concerned by that short-term trend let's have a look at the uh, the valuation for black Boys and with a pe uh, for current year forecast of 45 not as uh, huge as Prometicus. If we look at what the market's been prepared to pay in the past though, they have market hasn't been prepared to pay as much. Certainly we've got a bump through here because uh, COVID eroded earnings and uh, the price not falling as much and therefore investors saying, well, we're gonna look through this valley that uh, COVID has created in the earnings. Prior to this, um, 28, 26, 21, you know, high 20s has been fairly customary. And then looking down the track, we can see that brokers are, are wanting, expecting to pay around that level in the future. So if we look at our target PE here, and I'll just see what the F says. Let's go for dynamic F. And it comes in at 26.5, which I think is pretty reasonable, let's face it, for, for what we should be targeting as a fair value PE for the stock. What I do know about black Blackmores, I'm happy to leave this at, at fairly low risk. I don't think we need to change that too much. Custom growth, let's look what the brokers are saying. So they've got uh, uh, net income growth, EPS growth, a, a good whack of growth actually coming in but moderating down the track so i don't think we need to change that all too much but do note that the trend is is not um to the upside so you know you might even uh, knock a bit off that uh, and say well let's let's try it out with maybe you know 25 percent or even 20 percent we're going to find that we're starting to get close to, to fair value but i don't think the the valuation at current levels is uh, is terrible by any stretch of the imagination uh, and and that's um, evidenced by uh, if we just leave that alone um, but it's maybe not um, you know screaming crazy cheap either so i think the valuation is fairly supportive of this level technicals are a bit concerning we need to see that bounce coming in buy hold or sell conclusion here uh, i think it's a hold on the basis of everything we've just discussed but if we don't get the right signals then you we will potentially turn into just a lighten not a sell but a lighten uh, with a view to watching what happens at that long-term trend level okay let's have a look at the next uh, question coming in here what is your view on lithium and rare earth stocks they have taken a beating uh, they have What's my view? It, well, it depends on which one you're talking about. And uh, let's just sort of start at the top and go say PLS. You know, that looks fine. Long-term trend is very much up. Even the short-term trend is, is actually holding pretty well. We discussed this idea of, well, is, you know, are these the only ones that went down? No, you know, uh, Omicron and, and the Fed turning hawkish and, you know, US markets coming off a bit. Uh, these are all factors that are contributing to a bit of a risk off move. And lithium stocks are in the, uh, you know, let's face it, the riskier hot money end of the market. So there's a lot of hot money sloshing around trying to find the latest and the greatest themes. Uh, and when markets turn, uh, that they're the ones that tend to suffer the most. They do the best when markets are exuberant uh, and do the worst when markets aren't. That's what we're seeing. So does that mean that lithium stocks can't run again? Uh, of course, uh, of course they can, of course they can. But we need broader market conditions to improve and for the, uh, the punters out there to, uh, to get a little bit more confidence to come back in. Uh, I can have a look at any specific um, lithium or rare earth stocks that you like, uh, anonymous attendee, maybe that's the best way to do it. But, um, you know, look, philosophically speaking, um, I, th I don't think that you you would say that the in the story is, has ended. I mean, in terms of the underlying fundamentals of lithium, we are expected to go into a deficit in uh, next year. 
Uh, so basically there's going to be more demand than the su supply can handle uh, from 2022 and that deficit is, is expected to, to widen into 23, 24 and then start to moderate from 25 onwards obviously as we um, start to, to favour driving EVs over uh, gas guzzlers. This one from John. Uh, hi Carl, please tell us about the trend of AV1 and uh, no doubt we're probably going to have some lithium stocks coming in uh, in today's session. I wonder what this one is. It's not one I've heard of. Uh, John, and maybe you could uh, fill me in and tell me what they do. I'm sure you know. But uh, Ad Veritas looks, uh, looks good on the short term trend, um, certainly heading up. Um, long term trend is starting to turn to the upside. I like the, the volume dynamics. So we're starting to see uh, going from a very quiet period where just nobody knows and nobody cares uh, to, to removing supply. So that first push removes a little bit of the supply around here. Then we get another push, we remove a bit more supply and then we get another push. And all of a sudden we've got this momentum we're starting to build because we've gotten rid of the supply and now we've turned into sort of a demand side market. Um, this big drop here is not surprising given what's been going on with risks stocks over the last few days it hasn't really steadied a whole lot but um, we don't have I don't have much info on this last candle to tell me whether we're coming back strongly from that I'll click update on my um, data provider here and hopefully something comes through but otherwise look I think it's a hold uh, without knowing enough about it I would suggest it's a hold we can't put this on the fundamentals because it won't have any is my guess uh, but if I had it I would hold on to it and that's the update just coming through and no change there so wish I could give you more info than that uh, John, but that's really all I can get from what I can see. Uh, this one's from Barry. Let's go to ASM, which is Australian Strategic uh, Materials, which again, another one of those beautiful, wonderful, fantastic trends that probably would have continued if not for this uh, this risk off move. Yeah, look, I think it's still intact here. I mean, I think, you know, obviously long term trend is intact. Uh, you know, we're coming into a, a fairly well defined, well established area of demand it's been demand in the past it's, it's it's an area where the longer term believers have accumulated uh it's you know we obviously you have things go up exponentially because they're, they're the stock that everybody's talking about uh, then you have the inevitable pullback and this is the this is the place where the buying uh, came back in to stabilize so um, if they're buying there there's no reason why they can't buy here and that's how support works and it's coming in around that long-term trend zone so yes we've got some uh, pretty nasty candles over the last couple of weeks but i think there's enough in there to hang on to that and maybe it's something you, you monitor as you go on and see well do we go from buying the dip to selling rallies so is, is there a problem say in here that we then need to be concerned about that would tell us that we have gone from um, buying dips into selling rallies and that's that's what i'd be concerned but you know with this shadow developing um today you know indicating that the demand is where we we thought it would be uh then that is uh that is supportive uh, i'm just waiting for because i know it's around here the update no there you go <laughs> so the update came through and just ruined everything i just said and this is part of the problem of looking at a live candle isn't it so um, typically we like to look at candles after the market is closed and then make our decisions. So we go from, well, some demand is coming in at this point to um, as of uh, 12.30 Eastern Standard Time, that, that demand is under pressure and it's yet to be proven. So let's see where it closes. Apart from that, all I can say is that the long-term trend is supportive. We might get some cash flows on this one coming through. We can certainly check it out for you, Barry. Okay, the next one is Glen, CCX, City Chic and Calyx. Let's have a look at those two charts. Uh, and we're not getting anything on ASM, sorry. No uh, cash flows forecast or no broker coverage, I should say. Okay, so let's have a look at CCX. Uh, one great positive here that we're not seeing on some of the other ones today is, is the white candles appearing in that demand zone where we'd like them to appear. So that's a good sign. Uh, you can see what happened last time. We saw candles of this caliber. Uh, so that is very encouraging and certainly a, a big plus compared to some of the other ones we've seen. Uh, once again, I would suggest you watch uh, this area here as, as a potential pressure point. Okay, because if we go from buying dips into selling rallies, then uh, then that, that becomes a bit of an issue for us, right? So uh, we go from sort of buying dips, buying dips, buying dips into, you know, selling rallies. Uh, then that is a concern. So uh, at this point in time, I can't see any reason why you would sell it. So uh, there's enough in the candles to, to suggest to me that you would hold it. And of course, I don't have a crystal ball. So if you've come here looking for me to tell you exactly what's going to happen, 
in uh, eight trading sessions time i'm sorry you're going to be very disappointed the best i can do is tell you what i see based upon my experience and the trends and the numbers uh, let's have a look at the at the city chic fundamentals uh, we'll get those loading while we have a look at calyx and pretty similar theme uh, isn't it we, we're going, i think we're going to be talking about this all, all day today because that's what the market's doing to us um, you know are we going from buying the dips into potentially selling the rallies uh, and only time will tell uh, in terms of where you're looking for pressure points a reasonable day today and you know obviously we have this update uh, compare this candle here <laughs> today's candle to the one we saw on uh, i want to say asm and we've we've got some encouraging signs that demand is coming back in to potentially buy the dip i would suggest that if we can uh, get back above this level here uh, then it's back on again and uh, you know happy days are here again if uh, we continue to, to hover beneath that level uh, it will be a pressure point then it could be a problem uh, so that high there is 698 if we can get a close with a seven on it then i think we're in, in good stead um, otherwise it's had a great run and it's pulling back now isn't it so the broader decline could take it potentially as far back as this dark green zone before we get uh, any sort of uh, rally from there and that could be why by the time this catches up around that five dollar level so uh, so far so good if i can give you some other trigger points here to watch out for clearly we don't want it to to, to trade back below uh, even today's low because today indicates demand it takes people it takes courage from investors and it takes money to create that candle they're seeing something they like if we get below that point where they are buying then they are under pressure uh, with their with their entry and uh, there's just too much supply in the market so these are these are your two levels here it's a hold while it's in that it becomes a buy again if we have a seven on it and you're probably lightening the load if it gets below this level here and i'll give you the number for your reference uh, that low there is 585. let's uh, head over to the fundamentals for city chic so we do have some broker coverage here two strong buys that's encouraging four buys three holds uh, and a very Im impressive mean target so 685 indicating 21.7 percent upside from the current price which is stated here is 563 and that uh, that can change throughout the day in terms of the fair value if we go low i can't see any any reason um, knowing what i know about city chic to to change that in terms of what the brokers have paid in the past forget that because that has not loaded up properly so don't look at that they've paid way way higher than the current FYP of 37 and therefore I don't see any reason not to doubt that uh, I think that's uh, quite a conservative PE target there and then all things considered I think the upside is there is some upside there the valuation is supporting uh, certainly a hold and uh, you can see uh, this price target 624 is actually more conservative than the broker's price target of 685 uh, let's see if we've got anything for Calix CXL there we go if we look at EPS, I'm not going to have to um, value this one for you, Glenn, because uh, without an EPS, like, it's just not going to work for me. Sorry, I, I need an earnings per share somewhere over the next few FYs to get a valuation out of it. So uh, you can go with the broker's targets, though. And uh, we do have one strong buy, two buys. Uh, the three estimates here with a mean target of 692, which does provide 14.6% upside. So uh, they, uh, obviously I can't go and do a full discount of cash flow uh, in a session like this, but they, they have that ability to do that obviously in their own time. Uh, so that is CCX and CXL for Glenn. And I wish I had more definitive answers for you everybody, but that, uh, that is the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. TNT is the next one for John. Uh, big drop over recent times, he says, do you think we'll pick up and I can't see anything here to suggest that it is going to pick up anytime soon, unfortunately. Uh, well established short term downtrend. Long term trend has switched to down. I know it's frustrating. It's one that has looked good in the past, and there is a you know, real business underlying this one, but uh, just not loved by the market, unfortunately. And uh, I'm trying to find some indication of volume that maybe there's a low building here and i can't really see it i mean it's great to see some volume coming in here with some reasonable candles to tell me that uh well to, to be fair that that candle is not where the volume comes in it's really on the sell side isn't it you can see that the way they line up uh but there, you know for every seller there is a buyer um and there, you know we have seen some demand come in here okay through the volume 
but if we slip back below that level, then they're they're going to be underwater as well. Uh, so, yeah, what 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 we what you want to see uh, is that volume come in, uh, but but on a, a candle that looks like this. So not on the black candles. Um, you want to see the, the volume kick in on the on that sort of candle, and uh, it doesn't look like it is lining up for us on that one, unfortunately. So we've got that one there and that one there, and uh, that's what we should see uh, lining up, preferably with that volume. Uh, it's not going to let me do it, but you get the idea. And we haven't seen it. But, uh, the the one I'd like, which is this one, came in uh, on decent volume, but less than where the spike is. Uh, I can't see any reason why that's going to bounce anytime soon but I hope I'm wrong for you John uh, buy hold to sell on that one it's I just wouldn't it's an avoid I wouldn't be in it AGY for Ron let's have a look and I wonder if Tesserent has any fundamentals it's uh, I haven't looked at it for a while but uh, let's see if we can find anything for you why not hey plug that in okay AGY is Argosy Minerals while that's retrieving uh, another one that uh, again trend is very good uh, and then it's slipped as we've gone risk off uh, will it recover look probably at some stage uh, how far can it go down before that occurs uh, you can see some indications here so potentially we could see a move into 20 cents and then we need to see some white candles come in I do think that's going to be a pretty good area of demand though because you can see um, this previous peak so what we find is that previous um, points of supply tend to act as future uh, points of demand. Uh, so it's kind of X marks the spot here. Is there anything in the candles to suggest that we won't get there? No, there isn't. Unfortunately, the candles are looking pretty bearish and you can see uh, how we went from, you know, almost 50-50, but probably predominantly white into this equilibrium where the blacks start to catch up. And then uh, we go from unfortunately buying the dip uh, to, you know, sell, sell the bounce not be TD uh, and yeah so look we probably want to see some volume kick in around that 22 21 22 maybe 23 uh, some long lower shadows again if we see you know the the candle I keep drawing it and hopefully you're familiar with it by now but uh, that's sort of the a candle you get the idea that candle occurring in that zone there uh, that would be with some volume that would be the way to go I wish I had better news for you on that one. Ron, the uh, TNT fundamentals, uh, we are going to have some earnings per share. Uh, we are, we've only got the one broker covering it, so you would take this with a pinch of salt. Uh, they do have a buy on it, a 35 cent price target, uh, and they do have uh, some earnings here, one cent, one cent, one cent, which obviously doesn't give it any earnings growth. But uh, with a share price of around 15 and a one cent earnings per share, your PE is 15. Uh, so you would su suggest that uh, uh, that's not expensive, but the, the reason why it's saying, well, you know, the time value of money, uh, you know, with, without any earnings growth, even if your target P is 15, which it has to be, uh, it, it's therefore the valuation is not supportive. But this is probably an outlier in terms of what the uh, the spreadsheet can handle because it's pretty uh, it's pretty rare to see zero 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 uh, earnings growth on anything like that. Uh, but if it helps. Uh, for you, John, at least you can see what that one broker thinks about that stock. Let's have a look at the next couple here for Barry again, EMH. Hopefully we get something that looks really fantastic. <laughs> we can all rush out and buy today. I'm not sure if we will. European Metal Holdings. Uh, I think it's done really well, all things considered. It could have been a, could have been a lot worse. Um, Barry says the chart is okay, and I agree, the chart is okay. Not fantastic though, and it, uh, the risk is that you know if we do break below uh, this level here, then it could be a bit of a slippery slope. Would I buy it? No, I don't think I can buy it based on what I can see here. Would I hold it? I think there's just enough in it to hold it. As long as we're above that level, um, it's probably just more of a pass for me at this stage. Uh, when, when can it? Yeah, when would it look better? Okay, well if we start to see some price action. Uh, probably around there then coming back and pushing back up you know high peaks and troughs always a very important sign you know closing above previous points of supply uh, very important uh, so something around that uh, 155 level I think would put it back in, a, in, a, in an uptrend uh, which if it holds this long-term trend zone would be very constructive next one is LTT and I don't expect to get any fundamentals on um, 
these lithium stocks generally they're exploring. Lionetown Resources uh, was honestly one of the, the best charts on the market until uh, this, this switch in sentiment. And you might say, hey, that's not fair. Why, does, why, do, why, do, why do markets do this? Uh, you know, it's, it's all or nothing. And unfortunately now it's nothing and that's just the way it works. And uh, you know, if, if you ask me, what should I do with Liontown Resources on that day where I've got the arrow pointing to, I would have said, you absolutely hold it and you, you even buy it and you add to it. And, and this is, like, I, don't have a, I don't have a crystal ball. Um, so down it comes and it, uh, it shows that, that that call would have been wrong, even though it looked amazing. Uh, where does it leave us? Well, we're looking for signs of demand again. We're looking for uh, what, we, what we've seen before, which is you know, more demand then there is supply and we're just not seeing it. And unfortunately, um, what happens is you, you have a market that is so positioned and skewed alongside with so much expectation. And if everybody has already bought who is left to buy in some instances, if we're not still stirring that pot, that um, you know, <laughs> uh, lithium slash risk on slash everybody wants to be in. And that's why you see these, these rapid changes. So everybody's caught long, everybody goes from being uh, you know, an owner to a potential supplier. Uh, people are leveraged. They have other losing trades that they want to lock in a profit on this one to pay for some of those losing trades. And uh, that's what happens. Okay, where do we need to see the demand coming in? Uh, I'd say pretty soon because you know this this is this is kind of a key level here. We're probably going to see um, this 130. The long term trend will catch up to there. Uh, it's not great that we've got this this sort of broader pattern. Um, what will we need to see? Uh, something that looks like this uh, into the future and then we can get a build up uh, and maybe another go and hopefully that occurs. But look at this one, two, three, four black candles, all black. Um, it, it doesn't look like uh, you know the demand is just coming in at this stage. Uh, buy, hold or sell, very tricky for me. Um, is there enough in it to hold it? Oh, look, I think above 130 perhaps. But yeah, you can probably tell from the uh, lack of confidence in my voice that uh, maybe it's one of those you you at least lighten the load and then look look to see how it behaves in that area, uh, and you can always buy buy things back. Uh, but I, I would suggest based upon those last four candles, things are looking a little bit bleak for Lion Town, which is a total contrast to how good it looked. Okay, MQG. Hopefully, I got that right for you. MQG, Macquarie Group. What a stalwart! How amazing is that? barely flinched in all of these long-term trend is still up uh, short-term trend is actually still up because we're trading above it i know it's gone orange some decent candles coming in here you know and for all of these horrible um, candles that we've seen we have seen two wonderful candles come in indicating demand coming back into the system indicating that investors are indeed btfd and that's what you want to see uh, to give you some confidence. Now, it doesn't mean we're out of the woods uh, because we have slipped some pretty substantial uh, levels through here. Maybe that's just uh, Omicron and what uh, and what impact that had. Look, this is encouraging. This is kind of, uh, you know, if this goes up, it's great for the rest of the market. It's great for risk on because this is, this is one of those uh, ultimate risk on stocks that benefits when the economy is doing well and there are deals to be made. Uh, so uh, look, we want we don't want to see any sort of um, upper shadows, black candles coming in around here to make a lower top. And how many charts have we seen today make those lower tops? Right, we don't want to see that. We want to see continuations. We want to see white candles. We want to see pushing into 205. Uh, because if we don't, then we're going to get this uh, sell the bounce or sell the rally, or whatever. There's no acronym for that that I'm aware of. Uh, and then that could be a problem if that occurs. So I'd be sort of watching close to those highs around 205, the candles in there. If you start to see uh, the opposite of the candle that I do like to see, um, and it would look like this, then that would indicate that um, you know you might want to lighten the load. But until then, aren't you lucky as a Macquarie Bank shareholder that you've had not only one, but two of these candles and at higher points as well. So demand is building, in fact. Uh, definitely a, a hold for me on Macquarie, and that one was for Ron again. Uh, why don't we look at the Macquarie fundamentals for you, Ron, while we're at it? MQG. I'm guessing it's a, you know, it's a substantial uh, long-term portfolio holding for you. So let's get some fundamentals on it. Uh, while we're doing that, um, Talga for Barry, uh, which has been a tricky one, hasn't it? Uh, again, you know, looking great, just didn't get going. And and you you probably heard me t speak enough today, uh, and you can start to make your own, uh, draw your own conclusions about what these candles mean. 
uh, we just saw Macquarie. We just saw that demand come in uh, and, and we saw that demand rising. And yet you look at this and there's no demand in the system yet. To be fair, look, we have had a little, this little shadow is encouraging. It's happening at a level where there, sh you know, there has been demand in the past, but today is hardly what you call a confident follow through. Uh, for me, I, I looked at it here and I thought, you know, this is going to get going again. I looked at these um, couple of white candles. And I thought, you know, lower shadow, uh, nice pullback to, to this um, previous point of supply. Uh, I looked at it there and I thought, you know what, this is this is going to go again. Uh, and yep, I got that wrong. It didn't. Uh, but again, you know, circumstances uh, somewhat beyond our control in the broader market. Uh, we'll buy, hold or sell for you on this one, Barry. It's tough. Uh, just enough to hold it, but only just enough. Um, but if you're a long-suffering hodler of Tauga, you're probably going to halt it anyway. Uh, and see what this one can do. You know, it's going to be a hero or zero on this one. And, you know, I still think there's there's more to come in the Talga story. Let's have a look at Macquarie Bank for Ron, and let's have a look. It's a very interesting stock. It's a very polarizing stock, isn't it? Because uh, some uh, some people love it, and they can see the the you know the upside of this. And some people say, well, you know, it, it's it's. It's only good in a bull market. Uh, but we do have two strong buys, five buys, four holds, no sells, but one strong sell. Interesting, I bet you that's UBS. Uh, in terms of the targets, plenty of estimates. So we're going to get a pretty good um, understanding of what the market thinks is fair value on this one, 204.89, which gives you about 2.4% upside. Um, the reason why we're not getting anything down here is simply because I need to adjust this to take into account the Macquarie Bank's FYNs at the end of March and then it starts to work. Uh, what have they what have the market what has the market paid in the past for Macquarie Bank? Sort of uh, mid 20s I think is a fairly reasonable PE. Looking forward though, um, holding it to a, a slightly tougher account here isn't it? Probably about 20. Uh, I think a, a dynamic uh, F forward looking PE of 19.8 is not unreasonable. I think you could if you really wanted to maybe do something like this which takes the average of all of them and I'm guessing yes it was going to go sort of up a little bit to the 23s but I think somewhere between um, sort of 20 and 23 is, is not unreasonable to, to hold this one to account let's get rid of that doesn't matter of course but just so I don't make any mistakes later on I don't think it, there's any reason to change that or that the brokers don't have huge uh, earnings upside estimates on this one although it's good to see sort of getting better that's always encouraging we saw one earlier on today where it's getting worse so this seven percent i think here is very very reasonable seven percent earnings growth from macquarie bank over the next few years i, I think it could do that in in a doddle and uh, with a fairly reasonable p i think the valuation is very supportive of higher prices for macquarie bank so uh, it confirms my view that it is a hold Let's have a look at LKE for Jill. LKE, how are we going on time? There we are, way over as usual. Lake Resources, another one of these. Lithium stocks, I think it's actually fared pretty well, all things considered. I mean, we've seen some absolute train wrecks of charts. So we're seeing, in terms of relative strength, some stocks uh, that you might want to look at when things recover. Note I, note I said when, not if. When things recover. Uh, the ones that did the best should probably continue to do the best. That's going to be a key level there, around about 70 cents. Nothing in the volume to suggest that um, anything sinister is going on, nor really though, uh, as you can see, we, we haven't had any sort of major panic selling here. It's just been a steady decline in line with the broader pullback in this sector. We would like to see some volume come back in with some white candles to indicate that this supply, which is pretty pesky, let's face it, is being removed. Uh, and with those white candles hopefully happening at um, you know progressively higher and higher levels, um, that would um, swing this one back to the buy side. So these arrows are just a path out. It's not my prediction of what will happen. It's just giving you an idea of the price action you want to see to get more confidence that we are moving out. So you want to see it pushing to about that zone where the short-term uh, downtrend is, is, is pressuring prices you can see how it's pressuring prices now we've got it's gone from supporting prices now to pressuring prices so a move back into that zone challenge that supply a little bit of a pullback is customary but then take that supply out and close back above um, probably it's going to be in the high 80s maybe even a 90 close uh, and then that would signal we're out of the woods on lake resources. I think there's definitely enough in that one to hold it Jill. Uh, I won't put it in the fundamentals because I doubt we're going to get any. The next one is VML, which is Vital Metals, one of our rare earth stocks, if I'm uh, not mistaken, Glenn. And 
Yeah, look, it's 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 flatlined, but uh, not necessarily in a panicking way, is it? it it's just, just ebb and flow on this one. It doesn't look like investors are too panicked here, and they're probably going to hold all. So I'm happy to to hold all. It's not it's not a pretty chart, though. It's not a pretty chart, but uh, I think if you're a hodler on that one, you're going to continue to do so. OZL, I won't put VML in the fundamentals because we won't have any. Um, this one we will have fundamentals for, uh, Oz Minerals. And, you know, wow, look, straight away, hasn't gone up 30% in the last five trading sessions, but wow, in terms of the relative strength, how well has this stock done compared to so many stocks we've seen today? It's in that Macquarie basket, isn't it? And that tells you, that tells you that the funds, the big fund managers, forget the, the punters, forget uh, the talking heads on, on TV that come up from time to time, including myself, the, the real money, the real money out there has not panicked on this one they have just sat back and said you know what if the market's terrible today you sell you're nervous you sell your stock to me and i'm going to buy it because i think this one's going way way higher what a, what a wonderful chart um, look at the can look at the white candles we've had uh, as the markets have been just awful and and the market has gone risk off uh, it's maintaining its short-term uptrend beautifully and it is you know it's, it is being supported then look at this beautiful white candle here uh, at support uh, and then the long-term trend is it's very much holding. So this is one where I think we've got a lot of confidence uh, that the market is skewed to the demand side still. Uh, let's have a look at the fundamentals for OZL, maybe get a clue as to why. Uh, so uh, on the basis of the chart there, Harry, that is absolutely 100% a hold, if not a buy. I think if, you know, if you've got some cash um, to put to work, you're not getting a discount though, are you? You're not, you're not buying it on the dip. It's, you're still paying the, paying the same price, but it does speak to the, the quality there and, and the market's desire to continue to own this one in the face of uncertainty. Waiting for it to catch up. The reason why we have um, all this out of whack is because we're still on Macquarie Bank's FY. So let's change that. Uh, and this is a December uh, 31 FY, so coming to the end of its financial year shortly. Uh, and we've got some crazy numbers here, don't we? Crazy numbers. And uh, let's have a look at their EPS. So we've got a big bump in EPS coming for this financial year because obviously commodity prices boomed um, through COVID. It's a bit of a, a delay, I guess, with um, most of our big commodity stocks reporting at June 30. So that's still filtering through the system, you know, um, cycling some, some pretty good numbers this year compared to... Um, probably COVID affected last year. But then we do see growth moderating 17% for FY22, which is impressive for any mineral stock because most of the brokers are pretty bearish. Most of the brokers for these mineral stocks have negative estimates over the next three or four FYs because they're expecting these commodity prices to moderate. Uh, OZ, OZ obviously a big um, copper producer does produce some gold as well. But I think then bouncing back in FY24 gives us some confidence as well. So I don't think 5% um, is unreasonable. I think that's a really conservative um, growth estimate for this one. So that's encouraging. Um, the PE of 16 is is not high at all. I mean, that's that's not a high PE. We saw ProMedicus at 133. So I think that's encouraging as well. And then looking at what's a correct PE to compare it to, it's not going to be 34.3. That's from our last stock. Um, although, having said that, to be fair, the market has been prepared to pay quite high PEs for this one in the past. Uh, but because of this idea that uh, we're in a cyclical bump in terms of commodity prices, and that is, you know, commodity prices are going to struggle to go any higher. Now, you might have your own view on that. You might say, hey, they are going higher. Um, we, we, we have to expect the future is a much lower P and this is why we have the ability in my spreadsheet to go, uh, you know, dynamic. That's all the history that we have. Just historical, maybe maybe because something's happened like COVID, uh, historical PEs are a better represent, representation of what to expect in, in, in the future or we go future, which is where I like to keep it. And it comes back bang on 15, which I think is pretty reasonable. And unfortunately, it does change the valuation somewhat, doesn't it, as well, um, which doesn't surprise me. And I'll explain why in a second. But let's have a look at the, the brokers. There's three strong buys for buys five holds three sells uh, so there is a little yeah, there's a little bit of uncertainty out there uh, the mean price target is below the current price um, not dissimilar to my one there at 2510 so yeah maybe maybe this is a little bit bearish than where the brokers are but not not you know not order of magnitudes uh, more bearish at all so pretty similar if anything what I would suggest to you maybe with this minus 10 percent uh, that's that's um, probably subduing it a little bit and we'll see but yeah look uh, i wish i had better news for you on the uh, on the fundamental side of things but that is the vagaries of the market sometimes isn't it you got a chart that looks so good uh that would suggest that the stock is fairly valued 
uh, I wouldn't say significantly overvalued, but probably fairly valued, and yet it looks so strong. So um, whatever the fundamentals are, there's still more demand out there than supply. Fascinating, fascinating stock there in Ozodel. That was not a result I was expecting, I must admit. Let's have a look at uh, the next one here. Uh, this one is also for Harry. Thank you, Harry. T&E. Now, that, that looks really encouraging, doesn't it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Click. It will, it'll come back. There we go. Technology one. And hopefully, this time listening to me is not a complete waste of your time. And hopefully, the repetition in these sessions is starting to pay off for you because hopefully, you're looking at that and you're going, wow, that, that is really amazing. Look at all those wonderful white candles coming in. Not only are they white, uh, in a very tough time for the broader market. So that was a news event. Um, I don't follow the stock closely. I can't remember what it was. Maybe it was that one here, that one there. I'm sure somebody is shouting at the screen because they follow it more closely than I do and they, they can tell me. Uh, but what I like is not just the white candles, but the fact that we've got this high peaks and high trust coming in. I think that's very encouraging. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a buy. Uh, maybe it is. Maybe it is good enough to buy. I think it looks really good. You know what? Yeah, look, I'd be happy to buy that one. I, I think that looks really, really strong. The volume for whatever that news item was uh, is come in on that. And then it didn't, uh, you know, it, it, it didn't persist in such a way as to say that um, supply was, you know, sort of increasing. Got a little white candle there and a bit of supply removal here. Yeah, I think that's OK. I, I like it. So, Harry, you've picked two great charts, let me tell you, in OZL and T&E. And, and two of the top top performing stocks, let's face it, over the last couple of weeks. Even if, um, you know, net net, they probably haven't gone up all that much. Uh, the fact that they didn't go down and their candles are very impressive. Uh, we need to switch that one out to September 22. Let's see if we've got any uh, fundamentals here. We do, obviously. So uh, looking at the earnings growth, 14, 16, 18, 20. You know, a good, steady, solid performer, isn't it? And this is what we'd like to see. Even through COVID, it was still growing its earnings. So that's a big tick for me. Uh, earnings per share growth, sort of 16, 6, 21, but um, you know, getting better, not worse. I think 14 is pretty reasonable. I don't know enough about the business to, to, to change that risk level. So I'm just going to leave it where it is. We do have, I'll get to the brokers in a second. So for, I'm happy with 14. Let's check this um, P if that's relevant. The market has paid way higher in the past. I think it's pretty reasonable, it's sort of um, in the middle of the next few FYs. Uh, at that rate, I think um, it looks pretty well valued uh, right now. Um, the brokers don't agree with me, uh, or my spreadsheet at least. Uh, they've got a valuation closer to the current market price. Uh, and that will just depend on what they're, what PE they're using, okay, and what risk level. Uh, maybe maybe it's it's a moderate moderate risk is more like it, but uh, uh, I, I don't know enough about the stock to say, but I'll give you I'll give you a look. Um, if you classify it as moderate risk, 11% upside. If you classify it as high risk, um, then it becomes a little bit uh, overvalued. So I don't know enough about it. Maybe you do, but at least uh, go check the recording on YouTube. Uh, you can see what the valuations are depending on um, that city. Okay. Uh, what the, what do the brokers say? One with a strong buy, two buys, three holds, three sells, and one strong sell. This is a polarizing stock. Uh, median price target is. 12.04, but we do have a, f a high of 15 and a low of 10.30. That doesn't probably help us uh, with a standard deviation of $1.31. Fascinating stock. Okay, let's have a look at Australian Ethical Investments. Uh, look, I I'd say this is nothing more than just what's going on with uh, the broader market. It's one of those um, investment uh, listed investment companies, of course. So they invest in a bunch of um, uh, stocks. And I'd say, therefore, that the stocks within that portfolio have taken a bit of a hit. Looking at that, they're probably more invested in some of those uh, hot money stocks rather than your Macquarie Banks, T&Es and um, OZLs. But yeah, without knowing enough about what they've got, it'll depend on what they've got, if you know what I mean, as to, as to where they'll go next. Let's just, um, just on the on the technicals, there, there is potentially going to be uh, some demand in here. Uh, we won't know there's demand in there until we actually see it manifest itself on the chart. and and. What you want to look at, uh, and I keep—I know I'm a broken record, and I keep drawing these, but you want to see uh, that sort of a candle in that zone. Um, it doesn't have to have a lower shadow; uh, often, often they do, but something that looks like this in that zone, and uh, you would be more confident that uh, that this thing is going to bounce from there. So that's what we want to see in there. And I can look at the fundamentals again. It's it's a it's a tricky one on these LICs because you know it's not a, it's not necessarily a a business that that produces widgets for example and then based upon the supply and the demand of the widgets you make a decision 
Uh, no, I can't. The bro no broker coverage. Sorry about that. For Barry, would it be correct to say it needs to hold 1185? Uh, so I should have read the rest of Barry's comment because yes, Barry, it's pretty much, pretty much exactly what I said in the end. Well done. PLY is the last one. Uh, I think this looks fine. You know, it could have been a lot worse. I, I think it's okay. Uh, it needs to hold here. There, look, there is a risk, and let, let me say that. The, this is not without risk, this this type of uh, pattern, uh, because if we do meaningfully get beneath a couple of levels here, uh, then I'd start to be a little bit concerned that we could see uh, something that resembles sort of that into uh, the long-term trend zone, which really, because it's had such a good run, won't kick into the low 60s. Uh, I'm encouraged by uh, this candle, this candle, and this candle. I don't think these candles were at odds with what the broader market was doing. Okay, so if those candles were occurring, these I'm talking about the black ones, if they were occurring on big updates in the market, of course I'm concerned, but they are not. They are consistent with the broader market and therefore I think all things considered, I think this one's holding pretty well, let's face it. So absolutely hold. Is it a buy? No, I don't think it is. And I've given you a roadmap for when to get more nervous about it. Uh, and that is it. I made it to the bottom of the list. It's uh, It's been a long session, but hopefully you got lots out of it and enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, this is as, as much fun it is for me as hopefully it is for you. I do, I do like talking stocks. So uh, bring them along to the next session. Uh, in theory, this was going to be the last session for the year, but decided why not do one on the 21st of December if you're around tune in why not uh, the markets will certainly be open uh, and if you're not you can always catch that on the recording so i did add this one for the 21st of december and then we will take a break for obvious reasons over the um, christmas new year period on tuesday next week uh, it could not be a more relevant time and i did not predict that it was going to be this relevant but how to buy the dip safely uh, the technical analysis signals you want to look for to spot a low on the chart uh, that's where you go to register for those webinars apart from that uh, why think markets uh, because we're the good guys out there you know we do offer you chess sponsored holdings eight dollar flat rate trades compare that to some of our uh, incumbent competitors out there they're still charging you crazy amounts for um, for minimum trades uh, and you can trade so many shares etfs and of course if you if you like to trade cfds you can do that from the same account as well and that gives you access to cryptocurrencies foreign exchange and overseas shares like tesla google amazon etc etc 24 7 customer support world-class trading app and of course my analysis here to thinkmarkets.com.au if you're not a client of ours and become one if you're watching on youtube please uh, hit the subscribe button of course that'll get you alerted uh, every time i put up one of these new videos and uh, hit the thumbs up button as well and that tells us that uh, you like it and we should continue to do more of them well that's it for me today hopefully you got lots out of today's session all the best for your trading until we catch up again bye bye for now